Hi everyone, happy Monday. I am here with you live. My fancy dancy software isn't working once again. I spent a good part of the afternoon trying to get it sorted out for us and to no avail. So here we are, old fashioned. There might be some lumps and bumps when I go to switch the camera view, but I wanted to at least say hi. Hi Sonia, hi Debbie, thanks for joining. I'm going to give it a minute for Facebook algorithms to work their magic and notify people that we are live. If you are joining, don't forget to share the video. I do a draw every week and for those of you that share, you'll be entered to receive the cards that I'm going to make tonight. Um, hi Debbie, hi Pat, thanks for joining. It has been a whirlwind weekend. My youngest daughter turned 12, so we were out celebrating with her. I still can't believe that my baby is almost a teenager. It's kind of scary and um, exciting at the same time. I love seeing the young woman she's developing into. So it was a, a busy weekend with family and friends and getting all that done. And of course she plays ringette. So um, I'm on the board and I spend a lot of time at the arena when there are things happening. So it was opening day weekend and it just, yeah, crazy busy, but I'm glad to be here with you. Monday is always my favorite night of the week because I get to spend it with you. So thank you again for joining and don't forget to share. Tonight I am concluding the mystery stamping. If you've been following along all week, I've been posting clues and tonight we are going to create that card together. So gather your supplies if you haven't already assembled and we're going to get crafty. So I'm going to apologize. This is going to be a little bit bumpy while I switch the camera position around. I'm going to actually try and cover it up with a post-it note so it's not so jerky for you and hopefully you don't get seasick. Bear with me just one moment. Okay, I think we're almost there. Oh look, my keyboard's still in the way, that's great. <laughs> I'm just gonna try and zoom in a little bit so we can see my workspace. There we go. Okay, hopefully nobody got too motion sick from that. And you are all still here. Okay. I'm just going to double check my feed and make sure everybody's still with me. Oh my. Technology does not work when you want it to. So sorry about that, guys. There we go. Okay. Yes, it looks like we are still good. Love it. Okay. So I'm going to pull in my trimmer because we're going to need to do some scoring. If you haven't created your card yet and you want to follow along, you need something that's going to allow you to score. So whether it's um, our trimmer with the scoring blade or our simply scored tool. Hi, Laura. Thanks for sharing. Okay. So our first course of action is we are going to score our cardstock base. So we're starting with an eight and a half by five and a half. And we're gonna score that at two and an eighth. And I feel like that's not right, but we'll see how this goes. And then we're gonna rotate it and score a two and an eighth on the other side. So then these should fold in, there we go and line up in the center and I'm going to burnish my edges. There we go. So there is our card front. Now the next clue was to cut your card stock. So I've picked real red and these are two inches by five and three eighths times two and you also needed to cut designer series paper so these are from the patterned prints which was a celebration reward and i'm going to use the side with the snowflakes and this piece is one and seven eighths by five and a quarter and we're going to attach those to our cardstock 
So I'm just going to use my stamp and seal to attach these. And because they are cut an eighth of an inch smaller, it's only going to leave about a sixteenth of an inch border. So very little of that cardstock peeking it around the edges, just enough to give it some accents. We're going to do the same on the other panel. How's everybody's Monday so far? It was kind of cool here in Hamilton, but um, the sun was shining, which is always a good thing. So once you have those two pieces attached, then we're going to actually attach them to the front of our card along those panels that we've just created. I am in full Christmas swing over here. I just completed my um, October card club filming the video and doing out the tutorials and that was all Halloween and now I'm full on Christmas over here. I have my October and November Christmas club projects. Um, October's designed, I'm just in the process of prepping to send those out and then November I have some designs done, but I have to finish that as well as my Christmas sampler for the class coming up in November. And of course I have my kit class coming up in November. So lots of things happening. So there we have our panels and our card's just going to open. So coming along very nicely. I love this paper. I sincerely hope it carries forward or we see it again. So then the next step was to take a piece of cardstock measuring two by two. It actually said specifically a white square. So I have my white square. I'm going to stamp on this, but I'm also going to punch it out, which is why I have another square measuring two by two. And this is in real red to coordinate with my cardstock. So on my white square, I am going to use the perfectly plaid stamp set. This is actually in the annual catalog and I think it gets missed because it's not in the mini catalog but this is a set that's been around for a couple of years now. It's actually one of my favorites. There is a coordinating punch that goes with it and so I wanted to use this tonight and I'm going to use this plaid tree just because it ties together with all our plaid and I'm going to mount that to my block. And I'm going to grab real red ink, which I didn't grab. Pat me too. It's definitely a favorite. All right. So I'm going to stamp this or ink this up on my real red. And before I apply it to my paper, I just want to test it to see You'll see, and I have a dog hair in there. So if I hadn't tested it, I wouldn't have noticed that. But I think it's going to be too bold if I go full strength. So I think I might stamp off once as I stick my finger in that ink. There we go. And I'm going to stamp this. Lovely. So then I'm going to close my ink because I will stick my finger in it, which I've already done. So we'll just wipe that on my jeans. Nobody will ever know, except all of you. <laughs> and then I'm going to use my punch and I'm going to punch this out. Now here's a, a little trick for you. So if your cardstock is too small to be able to maneuver and grab it in the, the corners around the punch, if you have the take your pick tool, use the putty edge and you can actually use it to help move that paper inside the parameters of your punch. So we want to get that all lined up and then we're just going to give it a squeeze, pop that out. And I'm going to attach this to my real red two by two square using Stampin' Dimensionals. So I like to use every last little bit of my dimensionals. So you can see that I just have edges left. I'm gonna use my snips 
and just create some little pieces. And this way you get bigger bang for your buck when it comes to Stampin' Dimensionals. I'm gonna center that like so. Now we're gonna pull in the cardstock, and this could have been any color. Um, and this is four inches by two and a half inches. And we're going to stamp our sentiment. And I'm gonna stamp this in real red again, keeping it very monochromatic in the red and white. So I'm gonna ink up Merry Christmas. And I'm gonna stamp that along the bottom of that basic white cardstock. And then our little square is going to get attached on top like that. And I'm just gonna use my seal. I'm not going to pop that up at all. There we go. And I feel like there's a, a bit of a gap here. So I'm going to actually pull in some basic white Baker's twine. I'm gonna wrap that around a couple of times. Probably didn't need that much. So let's pull that back a little bit. There we go. So when I'm working with Baker's twine, I actually like to tie it in a knot before I attempt to tie it in a bow. It just holds a little bit snugger and then it's not sliding all over as you tie that bow. So I just trim my end and now I can go back and play with my bunny loops and tails and get them to the desired size. to hide there we go all right so I like that okay so then this is going to get attached right to our card front but only on half of it so we want the card to be able to open, obviously, and if we attach it to both panels, it won't open. So I'm going to only put adhesive on one half of the piece here. I'm going to try and center that as best as possible. Ooh, maybe not. Like so. There we go. So then the next step was to have a little circle or a square or something tiny. So I have a piece of basic white here. I'm going to grab a punch. So we no longer have our circle punches, but I love them. So I'm going to use it. You could also use a shape. So if you didn't want to use a circle and you had a shape you wanted to use, you could do that too. So I'm just looking behind me to see if there's something maybe that I want to use instead of a circle and I don't see anything. And I don't feel like pulling out my um, stamp and cut emboss machine, but we need to stamp something on there. So let's see. I don't really like the pine cone. And what else do I have? I've got some sets on my desk here. You know what, let's go with the snow actually. So this is the Peaceful Deer stamp set. And the reason this is out on my desk is because it is the feature of my Christmas card club. So September has already gone out. October and November are in the works and Card club attendees will actually make 12 cards, so six designs, two of each in each of the months. And 
by the end of the three months, you'll have 36 cards. And if you joined late, only in October, then you'll have 24. And if you're only signing up for November, you're still going to have 12 cards, which will give you a great start to your holiday card making this year. So I'm going to pull in my dimensionals once again. These are the minis this time. And this is just going to get attached to the card front at the bottom for that little piece to tuck into to hold the card closed. So there we have our monochromatic Christmas card. But of course, if you know me, you know I like bling. I had originally pulled out the real red rhinestones, but now that I'm looking at it, I think maybe I wanna go with the clear. Just to add a little something extra to our card. And we'll do this one. So there we have it. So this is known as a gate fold card for those of you that like fancy folds. And I was actually playing with other designs using this fold earlier today as I was prepping for my live. So let me show you. So this is another one that I did. So the exact same fold. The only omission is I didn't do this little piece here and I used a die cut. So this is the scalloped contours dies. The tree is still from the set. So it's this one here. And then there is a little stem to call to do your tree trunk. So that's another design. And then if you follow my blog at all, this past week I hopped with the um, Fancy Fold blog hop team and we did a triangle gate fold, which is just a twist on that same fold. And so this is the triangle fold. And I will do a video on how to create this. It's actually quite easy. Um, almost easier than this if I think about it because it's one piece of paper. So you start with a piece of designer series paper measuring 12 inches by five and a quarter and then you score it, fold it, and then you can just mount it to a base if you choose. And then there's a little bit of cutting involved and that's really it. So I will do a video to show you how to do that. So that is my card for this evening, short and sweet and to the point. If you do not subscribe to my newsletter, you'll have missed the information that I sent out today on a one day flash sale happening this Wednesday. Every cling set, cling, sorry, cling mount stamp set um, in the annual catalog only is going to be discounted 15% on Wednesday only. And if you subscribe to my, news, my newsletter, you'll have all the details as well as the complete list of the stamp sets that are included. There's also a wish list that you can um, save and print so you can fill out the stamp sets that you're interested in easily for reference. And then um, come Wednesday when you place your order, all qualifying orders will be eligible for Inkblots rewards. And if you don't know about Inkblots, that's my in-house reward system. It's not something offered by Stampin' Up. It's something that I do as a Stampin' Up demonstrator to thank all of you for your business. And uh, there are different levels. So depending on how much you spend, there are different things. One of the rewards at the $60 level is a free class featuring the whimsy and wonder um, suite of products. I don't think I have a card within reach to show you a sneak peek. Let me see if I can find one. Maybe. Yes, no. No. Maybe. No, I don't have one within reach. Sorry. I was going to show you a sneak peek. I did post it on my Facebook page. So after the video, go back and scroll through and you'll see one. So you'll make four cards. It's a free class. I'll send you a video tutorial as well as a PDF tutorial all for shopping with me in October. So that is everything. Thank you so much for joining. I truly appreciate every single one of you and I hope you have a fantastic week. 
Happy stamping, everyone.